time. This month's video will be a little different. Some of you may have noticed that I recently had a little music video released by the Perth Vocations Office. If you haven't seen it yet, you can find the link in the description. I hope it doesn't come across as a vanity project, because the reason we decided to do something with it is that a number of people I've played the songs for over the years have said that they thought folks might find it helpful, particularly given the song's backstory. So for this video, I thought I'd share the backstory. Okay, well, in my mid-twenties, I went traveling for a year, not so much to see sights, but more as a time of discernment. I guess I was starting to feel my age a bit, and after having done a variety of things since high school, none of which lasted terribly long, I was feeling the need for some long-term direction. I saw this year away as a chance for some space away from friends and family and their expectations, so as to let God get at me. My hope was that by the end of the year, God would have revealed to me what I was meant to do with my life long term. Well, fast forward 10 months into that year away, and I found myself in the US in the midst of a 30-day silent retreat, known as the Spiritual Exercises of St. Ignatius. The year had already proved to be quite fruitful, and I was increasingly considering the idea of some kind of religious vocation. But I had little clarity or certainty about the specifics of what God was asking of me. And with the year fast approaching its end, I guess you could say I was starting to get a bit anxious about it. I hadn't initially planned on doing the 30-day retreat during my year away, but other plans had fallen through and the retreat just seemed to fall into place. I should note that the spiritual exercises are quite intense, with several lengthy periods of guided mental prayer each day, and the only conversation being a daily visit with a spiritual director. Suffice to say, all that inner work can be quite draining, so you really need some kind of physical outlet. I tried to go for daily walks, but I was in Phoenix in the middle of summer, which is stinking hot. I tried getting up early or staying up late, but it was messing with my sleep. So in the end, they gave me a key to the hall next door to where I was staying, which had a piano in it. And so going in there and beating up on that old piano became my outlet. Not entirely in the spirit of a silent retreat, perhaps, but they said it was okay. Well, one day I was in there and I happened to be playing a song that had the word goodbye in it. And before long, I noticed a few tears welling up beneath the surface. I was a little surprised because it didn't seem particularly related to anything I'd been going through in the retreat. Upon finishing the song, I decided to stay with the theme and after doodling on the keys for a little while, I started writing a simple song essentially based around the word goodbye. Again, I wasn't entirely sure if this was something I should have been focusing on, but the latent tears sure seemed an indication of something. Well, I threw together a rough version of the song in about 30 minutes, which is the quickest I've ever written a song, and after doing an initial recording of it, I decided to take a little break. I had some rubbish left over from lunch, so I went to throw it in the bin outside, and as I lifted the lid of the bin, I kid you not, looking right at me from inside the bin was this note. Just to clarify, no, the note wasn't framed when I found it. I did that later. Yes, it was just sitting there on top of a pile of rubbish looking right at me. And yes, coming 30 seconds after writing a song called Goodbye, I couldn't believe what I was looking at. Well, needless to say, by now God had my full attention. As I sat with it all some more, I started to see the relevance of all this to my year away. By this stage, I knew enough of the general direction in which I was being led to know a number of things that I wasn't going to do with my life. And this whole experience with the song seemed to be saying that I wouldn't be shown the specifics of what I was meant to do with my life until I had let go those things that I wasn't going to do. As the line in the chorus of the song I'd just written said, goodbye to the life I might have led, I'm going with something else instead. So that evening I settled in with my new goodbye note and song and I started going through all the things I might have liked to do with my life that probably weren't going to happen. And those tears that had been gathering under the surface started pouring out. I said goodbye to the family I wasn't going to have. I said goodbye to dreams of a music career, or athletic stardom, or any number of other things. Then I started going through all the various mistakes I'd made in my life. Wrong turns, people I'd hurt, grudges I'd held, and one by one asked God for forgiveness and to help me let them go too. 
After a couple of hours of non-stop tears, I eventually went to bed physically and emotionally wiped out. When I woke up the next morning, I was still quite tender, but to my great relief, I also had a newfound clarity about what I was meant to do following that year. I knew that upon my return to Perth, I would apply for the seminary, and the thought of this brought me tremendous peace. After the fact, I was surprised that I hadn't realized sooner the need to let go of the things I wasn't going to do. But then again, our culture doesn't tend to do decision-making very well. We prefer choice, keeping our options open, whereas to actually decide something, by definition, means ruling out a number of other things. And a lot of the time, it's not a case of choosing between good and bad. Often it's choosing between goods. So for instance, to marry one person means not marrying a bunch of other people, some of whom it could be quite nice being married to. When we're young, anything seems possible. But eventually, we all reach a point where we need to consciously let go of things we might have done in favor of what God actually has in store for us. And if we don't do this, chances are we're setting ourselves up for the proverbial midlife crisis, waking up one day and realizing that we never did all those things we hadn't let go of. Well, moving beyond my year away, the goodbye song and note would become very helpful reminders for me as the challenges of seminary life and then priesthood made themselves felt from time to time. The goodbyes I said that night were real, but the concrete implications of them would need to be experienced and accepted as life went on. But I could deal with these implications with relative peace, knowing that the Lord had guided me through the whole process, even if he had to essentially whack me on the side of the head with a note in order to get through to me. Well, there you have it. Thanks for watching, and I hope you like the song. If you found this video helpful, feel free to share it with others. And as always, until next time, be a saint.